Praise the Lord, EC. Come on, somebody give God a radical praise in here today. Hallelujah. This has been a great day of celebration. <clears throat> happy Palm Sunday to you, and happy birthday to my lovely wife. Amen. It's a great day to be alive in Jesus. Amen. I am excited. I was excited to see Rodney up here on this platform today. Woo! Man. Doctors don't know everything, do they? They sure don't. They sure don't. They just tell us how to pray with specificity. Come on, y'all. And uh, it's a good thing. It's a good day to be alive in Jesus, though. And I'm excited. I'm also excited uh, simply because we have some good friends here today that I don't think you guys have met. Um, but Patrick and Jasmine Ford are here today. Would y'all stand? They're, they're the ones that put this great TV in for us up here. Along with these guys, they're good help there. So we appreciate you guys. We thank y'all so much and bless you. They are uh, in ministry as well. And so they uh, took a day to come and be with us. And I am grateful to have them in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you ready for the word today? Man, uh, Prophet Ron was great last week, wasn't he? Man, what a great word. It's, um, I'm so grateful for the great uh, men and women that God has brought to this house and joined to us. And uh, to have a man uh, be able to come and give such a word like that and then speak to so many lives and give a very profound prophetic word to all of you that were recipients of those words uh, I just thought that was powerful Juanita that was a powerful word he gave you and and uh, just on and on I mean everybody that I saw it was so good and uh, grateful for what God is doing in our house amen, amen. I want you to grab your Bibles and go with me for just a minute to Matthew 21. Uh, I'm not going to preach long. Normally we don't have this much preliminary stuff in our services, but I was glad that we were able to celebrate my lovely wife today. Amen. It's important. And uh, I do thank God for all that she has brought and added to this house. And uh, we are delighted uh, also to have um, our oldest son, her oldest, my oldest, uh, with her. <laughs> uh, but Chris is here today, so we're glad to have him in the house. And uh, uh, we love our boys and our children, wherever they are. Amen? Y'all remember that song? Hosanna in the highest let our king be lifted up Hosanna Can you say that with me? Say it one time Hosanna In the Say it one more time. Hosanna in the highest. Let our King be lifted up. Hosanna. Come on, one more time. Just say it. In the highest. Hallelujah. 
Open to Matthew 21. Matthew 21. It's the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. This is a supposedly about a week before his crucifixion and uh, resurrection. The Bible says in 21 verse 1, when they had approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them and brought the donkey and the colt and laid their coats on them, and he sat on their coats. Most of the crowd spread their coats in the road, and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them in the road. The crowds going ahead of him and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all those who were buying and selling in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a robber's den. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Verse 15, but when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he had done and the children, somebody say the children. Yeah, who were shouting in the temple, <laughs> Hosanna to the son of David, they became indignant and said to him, do you hear what these children are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, have you never read? Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. It's an interesting story, very interesting reading. It's told in most all of the Gospels. Very little difference in every one of them, but it's an interesting story about Jesus coming into the city. And there's just a couple of things that I want to point out to you today about why Jesus perhaps rode a donkey. Um, it's a very interesting little point in the story that he rode a donkey. Somebody say he rode a donkey. Yeah, first there was a prophecy that every person in the tribes of Israel would know and immediately recognize. They would also understand some of the symbolic qualities uh, to be found here. The prophecy that I'm speaking of is found in Zechariah. Zechariah is the one who uttered the prophecy and said in verse 9 of chapter 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even a colt, the foal of a donkey. Very interesting because Jesus saw this prophecy unfold at the proper moment that he was about to go into the city and tells his disciples almost word for word what the prophet spoke here. 
Go and you will find a donkey and she will have a colt with her and bring them to me. And if anybody asks you what's going on, can you imagine just the Lord has needed them and it quelled all their thoughts. If you'll notice when this prophecy is fulfilled, it is exactly like the prophet called it. And Jesus tells him to get the colt. He said, and I, I love the symbolism because when Jesus moves into your life, he does it in a way that no one has ever done before. He does it in a way that nobody has ever attempted before. <laughs> there is just nothing that can do it justice when you try to compare the other experiences you've had in life to an experience with Jesus. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I used to hear back in the day in the 70s and stuff, we would hear a lot of people talking about getting high on Jesus and as if they were going to compare him to some drug-induced uh, high that they had experienced. But there is nothing you can compare in the earth when it comes to an experience with Jesus. Am I talking to anybody that knows what I'm talking about? I think it would have been interesting if anyone else would have tried to sit on that colt. Just, just saying. Uh, because most of the time you don't see an animal that gets sat on for the first time without it reacting in a negative way. Come on, somebody. Young colts would normally buck or react in fear because it's a fearful thing to them. Uh, the people they've been seeing walking around on the ground are all of a sudden trying to climb up on their back. So it looks predatory to them. And uh, they might buck and, and act, but since he created the beast of burden, <laughs> I would imagine this colt had much calmness and peace about it, knowing that it was not in danger from the one who created him. And I'm telling you, when Jesus comes in your life, he will do it in a way that will have everybody around you shaking their head. I wonder how he did that. I don't know how he accomplished that, but look what the Lord has done. Back in the day, we wrote a song, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He touched my body. He healed my mind and he saved me just in time. I'm gonna praise his name. Each day, he's just the same. Look what the Lord has done. I don't know another human being who, trying to impress a crowd, would have crawled up on a donkey for the first time to ride to make their formal entry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Another thing to note about the donkey is that in the Middle East, if a king was coming to make war, he rode a horse. But if the king was coming in peace, he would ride a donkey. The rest of the verse in Zechariah speaks to this. The, the verse following 9, verse 10 says, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the bow of war will be cut off, and he will speak peace to the nations and his dominion will be from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. Notice all the things that speak to peace. He's going to cut off the chariot, a main vehicle of war at the time. He's going to take the war horse, <clears throat> excuse me, out of Jerusalem. The bow of war will be cut off. He will speak peace to the nations. See, most of the time in order to achieve peace, there are several things that might need to be done. It's not just one thing. Come on, somebody. He takes everything that speaks to the idea of war and removes it. He rides a donkey, but he has dominion. Oh, come on, somebody. I, I, I think we have it wrong sometimes. I think we have it wrong sometimes because I think that we think it takes rule of fear and power to have dominion. 
But Jesus said, I will come in peace and have dominion. Come on, somebody. Jesus shows us that dominion that we can follow and use as an implement. There is a strength in peace. There is a strength in quietness. In fact, the scripture says in Isaiah 32, 17, and the work of righteousness will be peace and the service of righteousness, quietness and confidence forever. Isaiah 30, verse 15 says, for thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel has said, in repentance and rest, you will be saved. In quietness and trust is your strength. While the world seems to want to fight to show strength, there is another way. I'm just talking to somebody that might know something about Jesus today. Jesus gives us a great pattern for triumph. He comes in peace, and in peace he has dominion. Does he have dominion in your heart today? That's what I want to ask you because you will know his dominion by the peace you feel. Oh, y'all. Another way to know, another very significant point that I want to bring to you today is the crowd response. The Bible tells us they were crying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the highest. Hosanna is a shout of praise. It is a shout of adoration, but it's also a shout that cries help or Lord save us. Save, we pray, save us is all found in the idea of the word Hosanna. It was a familiar term to all of Israel. But I think one of the most significant underlying meetings is it was used by rebels or prisoners who felt they were unjustly imprisoned. And yet here is Israel today. When Jesus rides in, they take that term. We're unjustly in bondage. We can't get out of this place we're in. We can't come away from the sin life. That's why when you experience Jesus, there will be something that is inside you. <clears throat> something down on the inside of every believer. There will be something down on the inside of every person that really wants an encounter with him that starts crying Hosanna before your mouth ever moves. There's a desire to know him. There's a desire to to feel him. Once you encounter his presence, once you encounter what it feels like, that's why it was so powerful what prophet Ron talked about, the difference between performance and presence. Performance only can get you into a performance mode. It can bring you into hype, but presence can bring you into deliverance. Presence can bring you into healing. Presence can bring you into deliverance. Presence has a way of making every person who feels that present cry out, Hosanna in the highest. Save me, God. There is something on the inside of me that needs you. And once you experience him, you will find that that cry never leaves your lips. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> the cry indicates if you can't help me, go find somebody who can. But Jesus is the one who can. Jesus is the one, look at Israel in the streets, the one who promised help and salvation, the one who come to break the prisoner's bonds, to loose the bound and the oppressed. And I believe today in this room that there are people who have not experienced God yet to the fullness that inside you right now, I'm preaching for somebody today that doesn't even know Jesus, somebody today that hasn't really felt Jesus, somebody online who just tuned in and you're watching and you want to know what is this all about? Let me tell you what it's all about. It's all about Jesus. That's what it's all about. It's all about his presence. It's all about his peace. It's all about his joy. Hallelujah. 
And I believe that there are people in here today who are crying, Hosanna, help, save. It's hard to deny a holy God when you feel a holy God. If you've never experienced him, if you've never felt his presence, you can argue theology and you can argue what you believe and what you think about Christianity. You can argue, but when you walk into a room and he sits down in the room, it's hard to argue. You come like the spirit, like the queen of Sheba when the Bible says there was no more spirit in her. There was no more argument. There was no more fight when she saw the glory and the presence of God Almighty. I love this because when Jesus arrives and he goes into the city, he goes into the temple and straightway, he starts throwing out the money changers and the con men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you see the problem here was the people were in that day still bringing sacrifices to be sacrificed to roll their sins ahead for a year. People were still bringing lambs and doves and what Jesus walked into was a bunch of con men who would take a look at your lamb and say, uh, you know what, buddy? That one right there is probably not going to make it. It's probably not good enough. But we got one back over here that we can trade you. Now, you have to give a little boot to go with it. So it's going to cost you your lamb and $25. But if you'll give us that, we'll give you a better sacrifice than the one you've got. Well, what the poor innocent victim didn't know was that 10 minutes ago, that same conversation had happened with another person and the lamb that they told that man wasn't going to make it is the lamb they're going to bring to him. See, this is why you can't mess with people's praise. I need somebody, somebody to hear what I'm saying today. You just can't mess with people's praise. You can't tell somebody how they can praise God and how they can't praise God. Because the people knew that whatever they brought had to be the best that they had. It had to be spotless. It had to be blemishless. It had to be able to see. It had to be able to reproduce. It had to have all of these attributes. And they brought the very best that they had. And can you imagine to be standing in line with your lamb getting ready to offer it as a sacrifice and somebody tells you what you brought today ain't going to be good enough. See, that's, here, here's the real issue. I don't know what the rest of your flock look like. So, so let me say it like this. I don't know the hell you've been through to get to where you are today. So the praise that you may be giving right now may be the very best praise that you've got. It may not be like your neighbor's praise and it may not be like your sister's praise and it may not be like your brother's praise but you've been through some trials and you've been through some tests and you've been through some lonely nights and you've been through some hardships and you're coming in today and you say God I want to give you the best that I've got and Jesus said don't you dare take that praise away from them and try to make them buy something that you deem better when I'm the one they're bringing the praise to. You can't, you can't, that's, that's why when you come, when you come from different, I, I love the diversity of our house because when you come from different cultures, you know, if people, people want to say, well, you got to worship God like this, or you got to worship God like that, or you got to sing like this, or you got to sing like that. Let me tell you what, there is no written recipe for how you got to do praise. <clears throat> the only thing it does say is that God likes clapping hands. <laughs> he does love a shout. He does love a good praise. 
He does love somebody to sing. He does love somebody to dance for him. And however you dance is up to you. And however you were culturally trained is how it's going to come out of you. Oh, y'all. Well, people are looking at me strange today. However you're culturally trained, you say, what does that mean? That just means what that means. However you were culturally trained. If you were clapping on one and four or, or two and four, then that's how it's going to come out. If you were clapping on one and three, then that's how it's going to come out. But I just say let everybody clap however you clap. If you clap on one and three, then we'll clap on two and four, and that way we don't miss a beat. We get them all in there. You don't have to do it like anybody else does it because for you to do it like somebody else does it means that you have already judged yourself by somebody else rather than bringing God the very best that you have the way it came up in you. Some people are going to be quieter than others. Some people are going to be more boisterous than others. Some people are going to be louder than others. Some people are going to move more than others. But whatever you give him, you just got to give him the best you got. You got to give him the very... <coughs> the very best, the very best, the very best. The very best, the very best. And I think it was interesting because then Jesus, he turns over those tables. He runs those guys out. He said, my father's house, my house is supposed to be a house of prayer. But you're in here trying to make money off of, now he's not talking about offerings. Let's just get that straight. Because there's always a place to bring a gift to the king. And in that, it needs to be the best you have. Am I talking to anybody in here? It's got to be the best you got. But watch this. He said, they said, do you not hear what these kids are hollering? And I love it because it was the children. The adults in the temple, I don't know what they were doing. But the children in the temple kept shouting Hosanna. I find it interesting that everybody shouted outside. <laughs> but only the children shouted inside. Oh, y'all. <laughs> that temple, that temple, that temple, that temple. See, when you shout to the Lord, you can't just do an external shout. It's got to be an internal shout. It's not dancing. It's not clapping hands. It's not jumping around and all that kind of stuff that becomes praise and worship. If there's not something on the jump, if there's not a, there's not a hand clap in that hand clap, come on, somebody. Because if it was just hand claps and it was just shouting, he'd have to show up at every nightclub, every football game. But God is not moved by just hand claps. It is the hand clap that is inside the hand clap. Have you, ever, have you ever been in a place where the glory of God got so rich and so thick that you found yourself praising God in a way you never thought you would praise God before? Am I talking to anybody? Yeah, anybody ever had one of those reflexive hallelujahs and just, just kind of glory, thank you, just a dip, just a little quickening, just hey, thank you, Lord. And you didn't even realize that. It, see, that's what I'm talking about. You cannot stifle those reflexive moves in God. You can't stop that stuff. That's coming out of the inside of you. That is who you really are on the inside. So watch this. Jesus said, and I'm done. I'm, I'm almost done with this, but I hope this is helping somebody today just a little bit. He said, do you not hear what these kids are saying? And he said, yeah. But have you not read that it's out of the mouths? Psalm 8 said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings 
In the mouth of infants and nursing babies? What's that? Look at that, y'all. From the mouth of infants and nursing babies? Babes, you have established strength because of your adversary to make the enemy and the revengeful cease? When you think about a baby that's nursing and a baby that is small, an infant, the last thing you think about is strength. The last thing you think about is something powerful. Man, you have to do everything for that little joker. He can't even feed himself, can't change his own diaper. You got to do everything for them. But yet he said, from the mouth of infants, oh, back up, from the mouth is not the baby this strong. It's what comes out of the baby's mouth. Oh, y'all, you don't believe me? Get one of them little jokers in your house and let him go to crying about midnight and watch you don't get up and go fix whatever is wrong with that little baby. He said, have you not read that it is out of the mouth of babes? One translation says, that you have perfected praise? Oh, man. Perfected praise? Perfected praise? Perfected praise is a praise that you probably hadn't thought too much about. Perfected praise is a praise that doesn't have all of your uh, interpretation on it. Oh, holy God. Our Father, Lord, Savior of the Most High, we bow and decree and declare today. And all these things that we do, that we go through, all these things that we learn from one another, if we talk to each other like we talk to God, if I called Elder Carl's name as much as I said Father God in my prayer. Y'all don't, don't get it. Father God, we thank you today, Father God. We thank you for your love, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We ask you to do What if I'm talking to him? Elder Carl, I would like, Elder Carl, can you go, can, Elder Carl, can you talk to your wife? Elder Carl, can you go over there and get some, gro Elder Carl, Elder Carl, Elder Carl. Like, after a while, he's going to look at me and go, my God, can you just get it out? Don't you think sometimes that God is saying to us, come on, honey, just spit it out. Get it out. What is it you want me to do? I remember when, when we were kids, we grew up in a hole in this church. And anybody in here grow up in a hole in this church? Yeah, a couple of y'all. Yeah, Lord, praise God you've been delivered, huh? They used to tell us, that if you really wanted something from God, you could just say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Over and over and over and over until you just said it faster and faster and faster. And, and, and you'd see people up there doing it with saliva running out their mouth like they were a mad dog or something. Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> my mother, my mother <laughs> had my older sister when she was little she thought that was the way that was supposed to work. So she went to the altar and she was doing that, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My mother just stopped her. She said, now, honey, when you come to me, you don't go, mama, 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 mama. Said, do you? She said, no. She said, well, what do you want Jesus to do? She said, well, I want him to save me. She said, then tell him that. Tell him that. Can I tell you, <laughs> perfected praise is not the stuff that we try to perfect our speech so much that we impress one another. 
I'm not here to make you think I'm some real important, real holy man, touched God. Oh, I prayed. He prayed with such dignity and clarity. You had to have a dictionary to understand his terminology and all this. You don't need all of that. Because when you really get in trouble, am I talking to anybody in here? When you really get in trouble, is there not something that comes out of you that you can't stifle? How many of you have ever been in a situation where you just cried, Jesus, and it came out of you before you thought, and you didn't even know who was around you, who was looking at you, what was going on, but the moment you called his name, <coughs> did not the situation turn around? See, here's, here's the reality, is that the baby's cry, the baby's cry, and that's all a baby can do is cry. But when they cry, somebody jumps up, comes running. You know, if you got four or five people in the room, bring him over here to Pawpaw. Let me, let me hold him while you go get that bottle fixed. Yeah, I'll, I'll help him out. Come here, buddy. Come here. And, you know, you start soothing the baby while they run to get the bottle. Well, I... Y'all, I think his diaper needs to change. Come here, Grandma. Come here and change his diaper. Because <laughs> Papa's don't do that. <clears throat> you know, that's a water hose. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Some of y'all looked at me so. But we, we all want to fix what happened to the baby. But what happened that made us want to do that? The baby's mouth opened and the baby cried. The cry is reflexive in a baby. It doesn't know to tell you, come change my diaper. It just, I know there's something wrong and I can't fix this and I need you to come help me. I know I'm hungry. I don't know that I'm hungry, but there's something in my belly that's making me want to cry. And as I cry out, guess what happens? Somebody jumps up. Oh, it's time for the baby to eat. I know exactly what's going on. It's time for the baby to eat. Can I tell you that in your praise, perfected praise, when it's a praise that purely comes out of your heart, when it's a praise that comes out of your spirit and it's not a praise that you've tried to coerce or try to make up or something, but it's God, I need you. Hallelujah. God, I bless your name and I glorify you. Something comes up out of you on the inside of you and you begin to cry out to him in your own terminology, not worried about what other people are thinking about you. Guess what happens? Papa God stands up. What's wrong with my baby? Let me fix it for my baby. Let me go get this for my baby. The strength is not the baby. It's what's in their mouth. Can I tell you today, Hosanna, cry it all day long. Don't just say it because I said say it. But say, Hosanna, I need you. Cry, Hosanna, heal me. Hosanna, deliver me. Hosanna, come into my life just like you rode into that city. Come into my life in peace and in joy and run the things out of me, God, that are not appropriate for the house of prayer that your temple is supposed to be. I could spend a long time on that, talking about the house being a house of prayer. Know ye not that your body is the temple? What is in you that's been buying and trading what you should have been given to God and taking it away from you because you somehow didn't feel like you were good enough? You somehow didn't feel like it was appropriate for God. You somehow didn't feel like it was the right thing. 
and you allowed the enemy to steal what was purely an absolute praise. I don't know about you, but I'm in a place right now where I just want God to be God of everything in my life. I thought I was always there. <laughs> but the older I get, the more I realize we still have issues. Come on, somebody, talk to me. The older I get, the more I realize there's still things in me that need to change. The longer I live, the more I realize there is something about just being able to call on Jesus and encounter his presence in such a dimension, in such a way that it changes everything about me. There are layers and layers and layers of stuff that God is working through to get to the core of us because he wants the real us. He doesn't want your fake praise. He doesn't want some little made up praise. He doesn't want some little cute praise. He wants a real praise. He wants a praise that comes up out of your toes, comes up out of your belly, comes up out of your innermost being. Is there anybody in here today that can give him that kind of praise for a moment? Could you stand with me and just give him? Come on, come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know if there's anybody here today that doesn't know the Lord, but on this Palm Sunday, I want to just take this moment just to open this altar up. I'm going to ask our elders to come and stand. And if you don't know Jesus today, and if he has not been Lord of your life, if he has not been a part of your life, I want you to come down today and come to one of the elders and let them pray with you. If you need Jesus to be Lord of your life and you're saying, I need that peace, I need that encounter with God. And perhaps you're here today and you're saying, well, I've been serving Jesus for a minute, but I feel like I've kind of walked away. I don't want to just hang out here for a long, long time. I just want you to move. I want you to come right now. You, you did it. You did it when you were in the world. You did it when you were in the club. You went to the party and you partied hardy and you did all that stuff and you didn't mind. But when it comes to Jesus, we kind of hang back. So I want somebody, just come on, come on down, come on down. That's good. That's good. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can come. You can come, you can come, you can come, you can come. If you're online today and you're saying, I don't know Jesus, but I would really like to know him before we move into this new season of Easter and resurrection, I really want Jesus in my life. If you're online today, would you drop us a note there? Please reach out to us. We will pray with you. We will come right back to you. We will come right back. We'll have the intercessors pray with you. We'll believe God for you. And I promise you, your life will change. Your life will turn around. And I know today that there is somebody who is watching right now who needs Jesus. And you feel that conviction in your life. And I want you to just reach out to us. I want you to reach out to us as you reach out to Jesus. And we're going to reach out to Jesus with you. And you will have a God encounter. If you're here today and you need prayer for any reason, if you have sickness, disease, anything in your body, I want you to come real quickly. Come on, come on. There you go. Come on. Just come on. Hallelujah.
our King be lifted high. lift your hands in the house today and stretch your hands this way and just begin to pray with those who are in the altar come on don't just stand back and just watch come on pray with somebody pray that God answers prayer pray that God heals and delivers and sets free in the name of Jesus father we thank you for it and we are gracious graciously moved God by your compassion and by your love to us so we thank you today for your goodness God we ask you, God, to heal and deliver and set free. Cleanse us. Purge from us, God. And cause us to be everything that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name. Come on, if you receive the word today, would you give God a praise in this place? Come on, give him a good praise. Hallelujah. 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 Just lift your hands to the Lord one more time. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he gift you. May he smile upon you, look you full in your face, and cause you to prosper. As you cry Hosanna in this week and reach out to him, be with us here on Wednesday night. Don't forget Friday night we will have communion. And, of course, Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. I will see you in the week. May God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.